Welcome to Casual Swinger. If you're under 18, the following podcast is not appropriate for you. The subjects and language are for mature audiences only. If you're not mature in nature, just make sure you're old enough to vote. We don't take ourselves seriously, ever. No guarantee is given regarding the accuracy of any opinions or statements made on this podcast, our website, or our blog. It's all in fun, folks. This isn't Dr. Phil. Now, consider yourself the listener properly advised. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Casual Swinger. This is episode 13. My name's Mickey. And I'm Mallory. And uh, this is an episode we're going to call In the Name of Love. What oh. more in the name of love? I'm going to channel my U2 right now. <laughs> and what's love got to do with it? <laughs> you know, it's uh, this is kind of cool for us. So, uh, you know, we've picked up a habit here lately of doing interviews mm-hmm. for you guys. And it's not something that we, we didn't start this show to do interviews. It really wasn't our plan to be an interview show. But mm-hmm. we've met so many amazing people. Absolutely. This journey. And I love being able to share that with other people. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of these people have been inspiring, influential, you know, the, admirable. Well, people in you'd so never many ways. meet. Exactly. Right? So, people you just wouldn't meet. And so this person today, and we're going to get to it here in a little bit, we're going to talk about her, but it's author, broadcaster, entrepreneur, Beth Liebling. Oh, I have such like a feminist girl crush on her. Is, is, I, it, I, yeah. a feminist, is that all it is? It's just yeah. a feminist girl crush? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Because, you know. I'm keeping it PC. I'm yeah. keeping it PC. All right. We're going to tell you guys how we met her. We're going to talk about her here in a few minutes, but we got some news we got to get into wow. first. Yeah, we have a lot to get through. So, first of all, uh, we're giving some shit away. Oh, yeah, we are. So, yeah. if you guys follow us on Twitter, um, we're not doing it on Instagram. This is just a Twitter giveaway right now. So, if you don't follow us on Twitter, you've got to jump in there. Follow Casual Swinger and... This is the catch, and this is the tough part, but hey, we got to ask for something in return. You got to follow and retweet. We've got a post out there where we're giving away Mallory's favorite toy, one of her favorite toys in the whole wide world. It's called a Crave Vesper. Yeah, and th- this toy's amazing. It's a gr- great as a gift, a great to have in your go bag. You wear in it as purse. fucking fashion. I, I do. I wear it as jewelry. I absolutely wear it as jewelry because it's not, it's very inconspicuous, at least as far as I'm concerned. And I think because we had such good success and with so many people were following this, we decided to upgrade it to the rose gold version for yeah, you Yeah, rose gold is really in right now and it's super cute. So. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting a rose gold Crave Vesper. How do you do it? You got to follow that. You got to follow us on Twitter and then you have to retweet that post. You have a couple more days after this episode airs. Yeah, Sunday. February 17th. Yeah, Sunday so, will be drawing, right? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, five days. You got five days, guys, to run out there, retweet that post, and follow us, and you have a chance to win. We're going to give this thing away before we leave for Hito. Yeah, speaking of Hito, holy shit, we're leaving in like less than two weeks. I know, I'm not ready. I, well, I We have to take a day off to I think, get ready. I think my winter body is ready, but my, my, my Hito <laughs> body is not there right now. Yeah, I'm going to have to go through my bags and boxes of slutware. Oh, God, you have so uh, much slutware. So we are going down to hedonism. We're going in less than two weeks. And when we go down there, uh, this is with Rachel's Rascals. That's a group we, we typically travel with. Mm-hmm. And they're starting a new week. So this is a yeah, little small rep. for us, a little different. Yeah. This is only going to be like maybe 25 couples that are with us. And then the resort will be full. Yeah, the resort is slammed booked. But yeah. we did something different here. We said uh, we're going to throw a full party. Oh, no yeah. matter what. So that's why I oh, love yeah. that Jim and Rachel. Too. Like, they're balls to the wall. I love yeah. it. We have pool parties on Tuesday and Friday, and then yeah. we have the glow party on Tuesday night. We're doing our games every day on the beach. Games every day on the beach. Tequila hour. We have two new games that we came up with this yeah. time. So we got brand new games coming your way. Oh, my God. They're so funny. Oh, God. You know, I can't we, wait. I think we're playing Guitar Hero and Rascal Feedy. Oh, Which Rascal is, Feedy's great. It's finger painting without fingers. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 finger painting, and we also don't have canvas, so you're gonna have to use each other. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, okay. it's uh, we really do have fun with that. And but what's coming sooner? What oh about, yeah, what Friday. About, we're going Friday. We're going back with the pineapples. I know, dude. That group is smoking hot. Oh, I know what that, that kit group. Like I can't look at it during the day. I do you know how much I work I get done with an erection. <laughs> it's it's almost none. <laughs> Almost none. It's like, nope, my dick got hard. Well, I, cause I think God gave me two heads and only enough blood to run one at a time. I, I believe that. I <laughs> do. Like, I'm like, I've mm. seen it happen. Yeah. yeah. As soon as he gets hard, I'm like, yep, there we go. 
But yeah, we're going up. Uh, we're going to Secrets. Secrets is one of our favorite haunts in Orlando, mm-hmm. and uh, so we're in talks right now to have them on the show. So oh, that would be, be so exciting, and I love how like that whole journey got started because they started with Hito Party. Yeah, they did, and, and then that's kind of it our turned jam, into so. this resort that's now a, a, a destination for people who want to get that feel for a, a long weekend or a short weekend. Uh-huh. You know, well, but and a lot like state. Beth, who we're talking to today. They're kind of the the essence of entrepreneurship because, you know, it's not like they had $10 million and just started, you know, this great resort. Yeah. That's not what happened. No. They they started in with some pretty humble beginnings and have been building it out over time. Yeah. So I really respect the shit out of what they do at Secrets. So we're going to go down there on a Friday, which is not our usual day, but we're going down with a bunch of hot ass people. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. And that's only, you know, after this thing releases, it's two days. But... You know, we talked during this uh, interview with Beth about your little king. That's right. That's right. So she introduced me to this party that's happening in May in Houston. It's called the Lone Star Spanking Party, <sighs> which I I am very excited about. It's um essentially a few days. There's workshops and seminars and conversations and yeah, Mallory's excited. About I'm this very case. excited. I, I'm. If it's your first time listening, I've discovered spanking. It's something I really enjoy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I'm just excited. So I think we're going to go down there. We may even do a meet and greet if we can. I think that might be coordinate. our first meet and greet is yeah. in Houston in May. Maybe. Uh, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. We've got a great location to do it from. Yeah. Uh, we've got, I mean, obviously there's some great clubs down there. There's Colette. Uh, and then there's Darling Way Boutique, who you guys are going to hear more about here in a few minutes. Yeah. So uh, for our Houston folks, if you are interested in um, the spanking party, it's May 16th through the 20th. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's it's just a place where people are going to get together that that share a common kink. So it may not be lifestyle. And that's a great theme for this episode, because this episode is not just lifestyle. No, that's no. not. Darling Way is not. It's sex positive. Yep. And yep, it's and, all inclusive. Very supportive. Yeah. Yeah, so this is going to be pretty cool, and I think uh, we decided we're going to do a meet and greet in Houston of all fucking places, which, by the way, looking at our stats, Houston's like our number four market. So really? I think, yeah, so we should be able to get some people out. If you're Love in Houston it. and you listen to Casual Swinger, do us a favor. Reach out to us on podcast at casualswinger.com and let us know that you'd be interested in a meet and greet. Uh, yeah. We'll figure out a place to have a party. Uh, have a few drinks, have some laughs, and get to know some of you guys. Yeah. Um, which sounds like a lot of fun to us. But speaking of Houston and yes. speaking of Darling Way. Oh, yeah. Beth is giving away some free stuff for our listeners. Free shit for you guys. Yeah. Free shit. Free shit alert, guys. And yeah. what is it? It's free thongs. So with any $50 purchase on DarlingWay.com, um, spend $50, use the code CASUALSWINGER at checkout, and you get a free pair of thongs. Um, $50 is pretty easy to do. I don't know about you ladies and gentlemen out there, but anytime I go looking for toys or accoutrements or outfits, I can spend pretty $50 pretty quickly. She's got some wonderful stuff in this shop, and I'm talking for people on a budget all the way up to like gorgeous couture lingerie. I'm talking like lace and French silk and... Oh, yeah. She's got bondage and BDSM and Oh, and follow and Darling Way on books. Facebook and you see some hot ass lingerie with hot oh, yeah. ass women wearing it. But you know what? Not just the hot women. She puts everybody in her clothes. Every woman looks hot. You can see the confidence, but there's women of all shapes, sizes, ages. I love it. Her lookbook is is the jam. Yeah. I'm it, yeah. It's good shit. So I really love it. Um uh, guys, you know, we are giving away thongs, so I, I would put them on your lady. Guys, you just don't look good in them. Lace thongs don't. I don't know. I may beg to differ. <laughs> I've had a few guys put on thongs for me. Uh, not me. It's not happening. I might put them on my head. Where that I'm has like, happened. I'm Batman. Yeah. Driving home from the club at night. That's because your underwear are always in the door of my truck. I know. I don't that's know why you bother why putting them on. I wearing underwear. Okay. Yeah. So. It's like, don't, bother, don't fucking bother. <laughs> the kids complain. They're like, why are your underwear all over the car? Yeah. Like, because I've been fucking your mom in the back seat. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. How to be great parents, everyone. Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, we've had an episode on what terrible parents we are. But you know yeah. what? Speaking of being terrible parents, we did wait for the kids to leave this morning. Before we did. We, broke we were it very down. respectful before throwing down and making me moan like a crazy. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Lady. yeah. You were like, don't put my knees up. I'm like, yes, put your knees up. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. It's a little difficult when you first like enter and like. Whatever. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shock. I'm rushing, so. racing, uh, racing straight to the bottom. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of the bottom, you may have a date this I week. might. I might. I'm hesitant to talk about it because I don't want to jinx it. Um, What's the over-under on him flaking? I don't know. 
I don't know. Yeah, he it's could be a flake. So he could new. be a flake. I, I, We're going to find out. We don't I'm know this guy. I'm not a gambler anymore. either. I don't. No, he seems like a, a great guy. Um, okay. I'm very excited to learn more about him and see where my comfort level is. Uh-oh. But I mean, all signs point to big fat yes on this one. So. Oh, yeah. Well, speaking yeah. of big fat yes, what did we do last night? Because this oh. is important. This is great. And if you guys don't follow this guy, you haven't oh, been to gosh. see this guy, you so gotta do it. So not lifestyle. So nothing to do with lifestyle. But I am a huge Burt Kreischer fan. He's the opposite of lifestyle. He is absolutely the opposite. He doesn't he's, mean to be. He's a 40-something-year-old frat boy. Literally, because he went to the Florida State University, mm-hmm. and the movie Van Wilder was based on his life. And How fucked up is that? They base they, a National they, Lampoon's yes, movie on you. Yes. And, I mean, they, that video of his, like, three or four years ago, The Machine, oh, yeah. it's like 14 minutes long, but it's one of the best uh, stand-up stories I've heard in a long time. And I'm a George Carlin and Robin Williams fan, so... The machine. <laughs> the machine. <laughs> um, it, it was fantastic. So it was all new material. We're actually going to see him again on Thursday. Yeah, he was so good. We're going to we're going to go down to Tampa and see him again. I'm such a fan, and he does the whole like bit with his shirt off, and he's got this beer belly, and he's hairy and sweaty. He had a hat <laughs> on last night, though. I think he's finally that bald that he's like, "Fuck it, I'm putting a hat." I on. don't know. That's so so, Bert Kreischer is. Up. One of the most riotously funny comedians that I know of, and probably because. He's so real. He talks about his kids. He talks about his wife. He talks about his life. I can't imagine he doesn't get in trouble with his wife for the shit he says. He I probably would. does. I would. You'd be pissed at but me. But she, she has to know what she got into when they met. Oh, yeah. Right? And there's something about that dynamic that, I mean, they've been together, what, 15, 15 years? Oh, God, yeah. They've been a long so, time. And they live yeah. out in L.A. He's on the road a lot. That, that's but, a but testament he's from to the, their he's from relationship. Orlando. I mean, he's from down here. He's from Tampa. Oh, he's from Tampa. Okay. I literally grew up like 30 minutes from where his stomping ground was when we were a kid. And he turned so. his debauchery into being a millionaire, and we did what? I don't know. We suck. <laughs> <laughs> we're terrible. So the the thing that I, when I say he's the opposite of a lifestyler is because he's totally friendly, right? So we had uh, so Rachel and a friend of ours, Miley, showed up at one of his shows and took uh-huh. their tops off just like him yeah. because he does every show topless. Oh my god! And that was before we ever got to see him, and I was like, this is crazy, right? And we're like, why are our friends topless in public? So we ended up going to an, a show what a year or two after that had happened, uh-huh, and we she them. shows him a picture of it, and, and he takes like, out his phone. He's like, I still have it. Yeah, don't tell my wife. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. It was great. He's like, I still have the picture. He, yeah, but, he remembered it. So yeah, and so he is completely friendly to debaucherous fucked up shit. He talks about porn and sucking dicks, and yeah. he talks about you know the Harlem Globetrotters are sucking cock, and he's he's racially insensitive but very sensitive at the yeah. same time. He loves everybody, and I think he that's, really does. He really establishes that, which is why it's funny. Yeah. Because you know that he's just like, I love you to death, but I'm still going to fuck with yeah, you. Yeah, it's a very much situational comedy. Yeah, it is. So yeah. you got to go catch Burt Kreischer if you get a chance. If he's coming to your area, it's called the Body Shots Tour. That fucker's funny. Yeah. And I got to say, I, I, I feel like I could tell you if somebody's funny or not, that motherfucker's funny. Yeah, yeah. And uh, absolutely Had a great time. fantastic. And, you know, we're going down there. We're probably going to see my buddy Mikey. And oh, I do love Mikey. I, I've known I've known Mikey for 23, 24 years now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mikey's always known that I'm a lifestyler. Yeah. I've been a lifestyler. He's always been very accepting of it and curious. Like, you know, questions pop up here and there. Yeah, he does, especially when he gets very drunk. Respectful. He has a lot of questions when he's drunk. Yeah. You know, he asks, you know, questions about what we do. And he knows, you know, that it's that it's it's a taboo. But I got to tell you, as much as I love my boy, most of his friends are kind of douchebags about my lifestyle. I th- Yeah, I think there's just still so much taboo that surrounds, you know, someone who has an alternative lifestyle. And I think it's great that we've made strides, especially, mm-hmm. you know. Well, I got to gotta, gotta, gotta temper that real quick there okay. because his life, his longtime friends, his yeah. life, his whole li- lifetime friends have been amazing to me. Yes. They have embraced me as one of their own. Love him to death. I'm talking about his harem of girls. Yeah. <laughs> well, who are you talking to? Yeah. You right. know, I'm, I'm, I wear that scarlet leather every time we're in a group. With yeah. Them. Because it's, it's just one of those things in their head they know and they have this stereotype like because you're a lifestyler, you're just out to fuck everyone and anyone. Right. If, and so you're a threat. And if a you'll swing, you'll fuck sl- my boyfriend. And no, a slut no. and all of these things. And you're like, wow, you spend way too many cycles thinking about somebody else instead of just having a good time. I, and it was, so why are we talking about this? Because we're doing Ooh. Darling Way today. We're talking yeah. about Beth Liebling and she's so accepting and so loving. And, you know. My boy, I love my boy Mikey to death. He's always been accepting. And so this last time I was down there hanging out with him, the conversation came up, actually. So he asked me point blank. We were sitting there having dinner with another friend of his who, of course, he had gotten drunk and told, um, you know, where, you know, 
what we do. And so he asked me about it. His friend says, hey, you know, I, I hear you're a swinger. And I was like, well, that's a great way to start the conversation. But yeah, uh, uh-huh. we, we are. And uh, he said, uh, well, he had a lot of questions, which was fine. Pretty well, most of them pretty do, normal. right? Yeah. I mean, um, he's got a friend uh, that, you know, I'm not going to use any of their, his nicknames. Like Mikey's Mikey, but um, yeah, I'm not going to use their names. But he's got a friend that lives up in Lakeland who had a lot of questions for me. And he's been mm-hmm. so fucking supportive. And he asks how we are and how things are going, if we're having mm-hmm. fun. Um, I love that dude. And if he listens to the show, so I hope he knows Aww. I'm talking about him. He's he's like cock diesel right now. He's been working out like Is a he? motherfucker. Good for he, him. he moved his girlfriend out from Vegas and with like her nine kids. So he's struggling as a stepdad. But I love this dude. And he's been super supportive. But the other guy that asked, he was really supportive and he was really cool about it. And one of the con- the way the conversation went was why do people treat you differently? Because you're in the lifestyle. And like you said, do they think you want to bang them? Do they think yeah. they want to bang your wife or their husband? Why is that okay? If we were any other alternative lifestyle, would they be as judgmental? Would it be okay? I don't know. I, I don't know either. And and honestly, I've gotten to the point where I will ask point blank, like um, the last party we went to. There was a little bit of uh, drama that ensued from a, a, a conversation like, what have I actually done anything? I know you know about it. Oh, yeah. Have I actually done anything to make you treat me this way? Because I feel like yeah. you've... You've automatically discounted and devalue who I am as a person. Boy, they look down their based nose. on whatever whatever it is going through your mind. Talk to me. Let me let me let's throw the taboo out the window because sex isn't taboo. It's a universal language. Oh, yeah. Like love, like laughter. Well, remember the New Year's party a couple of years ago where we were we actually caught some shit from the harem. Yeah. And then I we walk outside and there's a guy yeah. talking to two women about swinging, sitting yes. on the fucking porch. Which is okay. That was totally fine. Because he had a penis. That's and their mind, and this, I, I'm saying, this is the box that you know th- these people are living in. And part of me, I just feel sorry for them because now they're they're reducing the circle of people they're allowing into their lives based mm-hmm. on whatever conformity they've decided is, is is acceptable. It makes me totally understand why some people are so relentlessly protective mm-hmm. of you know they don't want anybody to know, and they're so hell bent on mm-hmm. discretion, which I get. But at the same time. We can't fix it if we don't talk about it. Exactly. And it's like, look, we are consensually non-monogamous well, and we're cool with it. At the same time, the fact that I, I would bring up sex in general oh, yeah. they with can't a mixed table it. with girls and guys at it, like right. it, that was not okay, but the guys could do it. Right. Our I'm Puritan right. fucking like, society. Is this the 1950s? Like, where am I right now? Uh, it's... I got good dick jokes. <laughs> you got you got good dick this morning. <laughs> I got great dick this morning. Well, I don't know. It's my dick, so it's it's better than average dick. But, uh, so look, we've got a lot of stuff going on today, guys. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk to Miss Beth Liebling here in a few, and then our segment today, which I know some of you guys really oh, look forward to. Our segment, yeah, this is all over social media right now. So this we shit have to caught cover fire. It. We decided Thursday night this was going to be swinging in the news this yep. week. Um, swinging in the news is where we talk about something lifestyle oriented or something sex oriented. And this week, what happened on Friday is there's a house for sale in Pennsylvania that Bad set the ass. internet on fire. Badass house. Oh, it yeah. did. And why? Because it had a fucking sex dungeon in the Woo-hoo! basement. And the real estate agent, to her credit, took pictures of it talked about it called it a private sex oasis it is so badass we're gonna get into that today we're gonna talk about what happened how it went viral where it went viral and how the neighbors reacted yeah i'm very excited so let's talk about beth let's lead into our conversation with beth here because i know we're running a little short on time um because we didn't want to cut too much out of her interview here so tell them how we met her oh so we met beth the, the, and so, by the way, she's got a book called Love and Laughter. You're going to hear about it. There's a long title that I can't remember. Yes, but it's uh, Love and Laughter, uh, m- Sexy and Meaningful Sex for Everyone. Oh, wow. See, you remembered. But uh-huh. anyway, so, th- so this lady, I'm standing ass naked on the beach waiting to get the Casual Swinger logo painted on my back by Jeff James. And this just really happy looking smiley lady is standing there buck naked and i'm like hey because you know what i do when i got a pretty naked lady standing next to me hey (laughs) that's how it works so i said hey how you doing and she said hey how you doing and she goes what are you getting painted i said i'm getting casual swinger painted on my back and she went oh my god you guys are casual swinger that has never happened to me before that has never happened anywhere somebody actually was excited to meet us 
And that was Beth Liebling. And yeah. she said, my name is Beth, and I have a radio show in Houston, Texas on ESPN Radio where mm-hmm. we talk about love and life and sex. And my show is called Love and Laughter. Yeah. I'm a podcaster. I own a business. Yeah. And I'm like, I think I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, she's, she's, again, she's inspiring. Like you said, she's all of these things. Like she's, it's like she's lived multiple lives. Yeah. And she's a divorce attorney. Amount, yeah. And I got to correct myself. It's uh, love and laughter, fun and meaningful sex for everyone. So that's her book. Um, I thought sex yeah. was like pizza. There's no such thing as bad sex. It's all fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, dude. I had some bad sex a long time ago. Um, she, but anyways, back to Beth. Yeah. Um, she's highly intelligent, Ivy League educated, but she's down to earth and warm and fun and just, she's amazing. I, I'm a, I, again, I'm a total fangirl. I, I completely stalked her online, um, ordered her book. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to leave her, her, her interview full length because it was so good and she had so much to say and there's so much yeah. going on. So this is going to be a long episode, guys. We do apologize in advance. Uh, but this lady is fascinating. Jump into this interview and really take in what she's doing. And more importantly, jump on the internet. Go yeah. to darlingway.com. Use that coupon code, Casual Swinger. Get a free pair of drawers for every $50. <laughs> drawers? <laughs> Don't you make them even sexier over there? Thongs, yeah. Women's thongs. Thong undershorts. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you You're can get... killing me. And I'm killing myself over here. I got it wrong for the second time. So third time's the charm. Love and laughter, sexy, meaningful, fun for everyone. Wow. See, what you and guys know why the, I can't fucking remember. She's Amazon. reading it and gets it wrong. I am. Why well, don't have my glasses on either? So I'm like <laughs> winging it, like one eye, like I'm a drunk trying to drive home. Don't drive home. Absolutely, drunk, guys. Ever. And hey, make sure you tune in here in two weeks. We've got a living history of hedonism with Howard Herrenstein. He has been to that resort 38 years in a row for yeah. six weeks at a pop. Yeah, we're going to release that while we're in Jamaica. Yeah, it's going to come um, We recorded on. most of this back in November when we were there, and we, we had to break it up in two different interviews because it was so amazing. He had such insightful and entertaining things to tell us about the resort. Yep. So, And then we're going to follow that up the I next day. So this is important. The next day, we're going to release the interview with the guy that's widely credited with saving Hito. Yeah. He brought the new owner, Harry Lang. Mm-hmm. He brought the new owner to the table. Mm-hmm. He put the ownership group together, and uh, he's widely credited with, you know, really starting the movement that saved the place we call home. His name is John Gross. Yeah. So we got an interview with him coming up. We're going to release those back to back, and we call those interviews a living history of hedonism, too. So that's coming out while we're at Hedo, so you guys stay tuned. Mal, why don't you tell everybody where they can find us, and we will get on to Beth Liebling. Excellent, guys. Well, you know we're Casual Swinger everywhere. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, SLS, SDC, and Cassidy. Please visit casualswinger.com and feel free to send us messages at podcast at casualswinger.com. We love your feedback. We love your input. We love your questions and all of your support. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll get back with you shortly. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. Welcome back to Casual Swinger. I'm Mallory. And I'm Mickey. And today we have a very special guest for our listeners. We have a Miss Beth Liebling with Darling Way Boutique. Oh, wow. So we're really spreading out across the country, right? Darling Way is in Houston, Texas. Yes. Is she just an entrepreneur? This woman is so many things. And I am personally going to be a bit of a fangirl over here because I'm super excited to have her on the show. One of the things I love about what we do here is the ability to meet people out in the wild and who bring a uniqueness or give unto the world, um, especially inside and outside this community or in relationships and love and sex. Um, When we run into those people, the first thing I want to do is share them with other people. And that's, that's kind of the similar mentality to what Beth has. Well, I I mean, I met Beth ass naked getting ready to get painted on the beach that's how i met beth and i'm like let me get this straight this this person is a sex educator and a relationship guru and a lawyer and she's all these things and she looks really good naked and she's standing here talking to me and now we have her on the show beth say hi to the listeners a casual swinger i 
I have never started a show with my face as bright red as it is right now. <laughs> Thank no you. one can so see far. you. That was a <laughs> lovely introduction. Nobody, yes. I am not very comfortable actually being naked. So the fact that you saw me and now have outed me to the entire world is making me blush like crazy. So, um, but thank you. Well, it's, that's my pleasant good. memory. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's crazy. So, I, I, no, we, we brought you here because you you have so much to offer this community, right? And so we, we said, hey, we think it would be so much fun to have you here. And we want to talk Darling Way. We want to talk about your other businesses. You're a broadcaster. You're a YouTube star. You're a podcaster. You're obviously a big personality. So uh, we just couldn't imagine a better person to come and talk a little bit about, you know, what it means to, to open up and have these conversations oh. internally in our relationships. And you don't, this isn't just a lifestyle interview no. because- Right. I mean, it, you, you cover everything. It's not just yeah. lifestyle. Right. No, no, no. This is, um, this is really my journey, really what I'm doing. And I think this is true for most people. We're trying to heal ourselves. And by doing so, I hope that people learn from what I've experienced because I came from a very, a family that there was no physical affection. There was God, no nudity. There was no, um, any talk of sex. My sex education was my parents threw three books at me. There was no joy in sex or relationships. I didn't know about love, just nothing. And so I was starved for it. And so, um, like I said, going to Hito and, and being naked in front of people, that, that's a huge, that's so outside my comfort zone. I say, I could talk all the time. That's so easy for me, but being naked. So I am not just encouraging, I think be hypocritical to try to encourage other people to push their boundaries and, and grow and change if I'm not doing the same. And, but then, so that's why I share my story because I think then it maybe will help others in theirs. And I appreciate when others from different perspectives share their story with me because that inspires and motivates me as well. It's everything is personal to me. So, yeah. Um, I'm right there but with no, you. So that's why I, I try to, yeah, I think that's the sense that I got from y'all was that you, you were, you were so easy to talk to. There were, um, and y'all cover so many different things on this show that I appreciate because trying to limit what we, um, what we talk about or what we think about or something, I think is just, um, it's silly. And we've taken, I think society as a whole has taken joy and fun and happy and pride out of sexy stuff. And y'all put it back there. You, you do this with an honesty, with a warmth, with affection for each other and for the people around you that I think is um, contagious and impressive. And Aww. I hope that I share that. Now, I, now I think I'm it's red impossible. in the face. Right. Well, if, if you're going to be <laughs> contagious in the lifestyle, make it with your attitude, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Oh. That's true. I like that. Excellent. So let's let's start with your journey, right? Because you've had this, this really interesting evolution. You know, you were um, a lawyer, you're an author, podcaster, a uh, sex advocate. I mean, you've made several jumps here. And how did you come to that decision to make those transitions? And I just want our listeners to hear a little bit about your journey. Well, yeah, my, it's, been a, it's been a crazy journey. I, um, so I got knocked up at the age of 21 and, um, and got married then and went on. I was married for 23 years. I had five mm -hmm. children. I still have five children. I have a granddaughter now. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm 53. Yeah, thank you. So I'm, I'm 53 right now. But um, so when I had kids, I always knew I wanted to work with families because my family was so dysfunctional and divorced and everything. Um, mm -hmm. I, nobody told me as a kid that I could actually talk about sex for a living, but right? I probably would have if I thought that. So I've always been fascinated by sex and relationships. So it was either psychology or law school. And I have terrible ADHD. So I realized <laughs> that taking a bar exam would be way quicker than doing a dissertation. So I went to law school with the knowing that the only kind of law I would ever do would be family law. Um, and I, I have a social worker kind of heart. I need to fix things. I need to help people. I want the world to be a happy place. So I tried to do that by making divorce better. But divorce just sucks, even when it's the right thing to do. So that was that was just hard. Boundaries are not my strong suit. So, um, mm -hmm. so I actually quit practicing law after a dozen years. And, um, and then my several years later, 
my marriage ended. And when I looked around and thought about, I was then 45 years old, I had to figure out how to find sexy again. And I had given all hopes. We had 23 years of BMS, boring marriage sex. And, uh, <laughs> and I, it's a great acronym. Yeah, BMS. I'm going to write that down. It's so down. true. Everybody relates to that. BMS. It's, it's, yeah, it's amazing. Um, but I needed to find sexy again. And I looked around. There's no place to go for a middle-aged woman to think about sex. You know, if you go to Victoria's Secret, they just laugh at you. You go to, like, Selma, they say, oh, you poor thing. Why do you have to think about sex these days? I was like, this is all wrong. And I needed to talk about lubes and dating. And I wanted hope because I just wanted to feel like there could be love. Um, anyway, so there was nothing around. And I realized that's when I thought of Darling Way. I didn't know the name yet, but this was the place I wanted to shop and it didn't exist. Um, a place that was more of a feeling and an optimism and an inspiration and celebrated the joy of sex, not, not being ashamed by it, not feeling less than because I wanted it, not feeling stupid for being a romantic, but a place that really I could, you know, you can take love and sex as seriously as you want or be as silly as you want. You just have to respect it and appreciate it. So it took me four years of, getting the courage up to start it because it's an outlandish thing for a woman to do, to start suddenly talking openly about sex, to open a shop and, um, and how to do it in a really nice and a different way, because I didn't want to be like anything else that was around. I needed it to feel good. And so four years later, I finally just said, I just had to, I just had to do it. It wasn't going away. And so it's the craziest, wildest, um, hardest thing I've done, you know, and it's, but I love it, and it makes a difference to people. And we're in a cute little cottage, and I don't know if you know Houston, but there's this area called the Heights. It's like the only historic or one of the few historic parts of Houston. I'm, it's residential. I have a cottage right next to people who live there with their families and old people and young people. And um, I say because I actually believe sexy stuff should be family values because I want people mm-hmm. now to stay together. And I never got people divorced when they were having good sex together. You know, a lot of people getting divorced because they're having good sex with other people. <laughs> we, That's a good point. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. We, a lot of our friends have sex with other people, and their marriages are awesome. That's true. No, that 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 may be true too. But they probably they're still having some sexy connection, probably with their partner. Oh, lots of it. Oh, absolutely, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it usually happens exactly. after the fact, right? Because lifestylers go out, they get it on, and come back, and then screw each other's brains out for three days talking about it. Yes. See, and that is totally cool and hot. But again, it's when you let that connection between the primary relationship, you know, if you have one, or if you're poly and you have lots of, you know, if you're in a a situation where there's no hierarchy, it's just your relationships don't really last particularly well, or at least in a healthy way, if there's not, I think, three things, physical intimacy, emotional intimacy, and then some sort of sexual slash romantic intimacy. So and if we don't have those three things, I think they don't stay together. I think you're hundred percent right. And intimacy is the common thread. Uh, and uh, actually Aisha Bailey, a therapist that we had on recently said that intimacy can be broken down uh, by, by itself with into me. I see uh, is how she yeah. framed it. And so intimacy is a common thread amongst you very smart ladies that we've had on this show. So that's pretty cool. Um, let, let's it talk is. about positivity for a second, because, um, you know, you have framed the things that ha- that you've had happen to you in your life in a very positive way with the outcomes that you've chosen to enforce, right? You, you've made these outcomes for yourself with your, your, uh, advocacy for sex, your advocacy for relationships, for families as an attorney with Darling Way Boutique, but, were you always sex positive? I mean, and, and I don't want you to go too far into, you know, what happened in your marriage if you don't want to, but was it, was it a slow transition for you to become sex positive? What made you go, enough is enough. This is what I want, and I want to advocate for others. So I think I've always been sex positive, and I only um, I sort of put a caveat with that because I actually, um, well, one, I don't judge as long as there's consent. I, I don't judge what people do sexually and stuff. I always just wanted it to be more joy and stuff. I don't, I feel like um, if it's just physical, then um, then it's, it's a little bit, I don't know. I want more. I want whipped cream on top of ice cream. You know, that's how I think of. So um, I, I'm not just 
an advocate for just going out and just having casual sex all over the place. I, um, if you want to sometimes and whatever, then that's fine. Again, no judgment, but it's more that I believe in joy of sex, the joy of sex. And that that's what's missing. But I've always been like that because even as a kid, I was asking my cousin who lived in New York and I grew up in Texas to, to cut out articles that this woman was writing in the paper. I forgot which therapist it was, but it was revolutionary. She was writing about sex in a, in a daily column. And I asked him to cut those out so I could read them when I came up and visited over the summer. <laughs> I was so interested and intrigued. Um, when I went to college, I took my first year roommates who were all virgins and I dragged them to the local adult store and said, you've got to see this stuff. You can't believe what they have. It's crazy. <laughs> and so I've always been like that. But when I was married, and that's the thing, I only I had so, so little confidence. I didn't know what other options there were. I say we, good girls, you know, we're taught we can either be good girls or sluts. Those are our two choices in life. And mm -hmm. so I became a good girl. I was a mom. I was a lawyer. I became very buttoned up. I didn't embrace anything that was feminine. I didn't know how to do it. I was 10 years into my marriage. I finally, I got drunk and I don't really drink. <laughs> um, I put this in my book too. I shared this. I, I was separated from my husband for the first time. And that's when I finally I came home one night and I asked him to spank me. And that was totally crazy. I couldn't believe that I did it, but he got all uncomfortable. I got uncomfortable. We never spoke about it again. And we were married for 12 more years, but I never asked for anything else again. That's wow. how awkward, that's how insecure I was. That's fucking tragic. And it's so tragic. It's so tragic. And so now, now I look back and I would say, I would coach myself and tell him, I would tell myself, look, you're going to rock the boat and it's okay. It's okay to want just because you want to be a slut in the bedroom and you're, you still can be a good girl in every other aspect of your life. You know, you can be smart and sexy. Who the hell knew that? I didn't. And so I would coach and I would coach myself also that, look, you're going to rock the boat for him and he's going to be scared and he's not going to know what to do. And now, you know, my radio show is on ESPN in Houston because I say, Men, they don't even ask direction. So who the hell are they going to ask about sex? <laughs> right. So I just talk. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I just talk and they listen and they learn something. <laughs> and, um, but they don't know what to do. My husband didn't know what to do. He was ashamed. He didn't. And, and so it, it did nothing. And that's how we had BNS. So I was craving sexy fun, but there was no place to help me feel good about it. And that's why I could have gone to a local shop and bought a vibrator. I still had that same shame. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't have the confidence and it wouldn't have changed anything. And that's the difference. So darling way you walk in there, it's a conversation. It is all personal. We talk, we explain things. We'll give you different ideas. I'll be like, don't, you know, you're not limited by this. You can use this this way. Don't forget this. Oh, by the way, the first time you use it, da, da, da. I'll tell people, Hey, this is one of my favorite vibrators but it took me three or four weeks to learn how to use it, you know, so don't give up, blah, blah, blah. It is all about the conversation because it's our minds that have to change to open our bodies up to enjoy more. And I didn't learn about BDSM until I was in my late forties. How crazy. I didn't know other people wanted to actually be spanked. I thought I was wackadoo, just totally off the charts crazy. <laughs> was so, it almost like a now, relief when you learned that there were other people out there like you? Yes. Yes. There's there's Even no there's daughter, nobody out like, there like you, baby. <laughs> there are probably, thank God there isn't such um but to find that other people want crazy stuff. And now I just say, you know, what turns you on is crazy to me, what turns me on is crazy to, to you. And so now we just if we laugh together, it's so much better than laughing at people. So let's just laugh because it is. It's so silly and it's so much fun and it's so it's joyful. It should be joyful. It should be the thing that brings us the happiest and most intimate um, connection, passionate, passionate relationship. I love that Absolutely. word. Good stuff. So were you a little scared, yeah. though, uh, along this journey to venture out of your comfort zone? Mm -hmm. Terrified. Terrified. So how did you do it, though? If you're, if you're scared, because when we have that fear, it usually, it, in a lot of cases, it paralyzes us. You know, it's really hard to take right. that and use that to push yourself to do something out that of your comfort zone. That was our last episode zone. on fear, yeah. uncertainty, and doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So how, so how did you do I'm that? Was it, a, was it like bargaining within yourself? Was it, you know, going over fantasies or dreams that you'd have? Because you, you stumbled into, like you said, like venturing into like, who would have thought BDSM? Like how, how did you actualize that, get over the feel, fear of it, and 
and push yourself. Well, especially given that it didn't work well, out, right? The first time you talked to your husband about it and you said, I want to get spanked. And then it, it, it was weird, right? Somebody made it awkward. So that, that planted more fear than was there in the first place. So we would love to know how you got past that. Okay. And so we're talking about BDSM versus... Uh, starting well, the business, right? Well, yeah, well, actually, it's both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of kind of both. Yeah. Like, how, how did you g- okay. get yourself out of your comfort well, zone? So the, the business, like I said, it took me four years to figure out, to get the mm-hmm. confidence up to do this, right? Because mm-hmm. there's nothing, this is going to be a huge public failure if I didn't <laughs> do it. And I don't like to fail. I'm, I really am a very, very alpha female. <laughs> I like to succeed. Um, so it took four years and just, uh, oh, my God. And remembering that as a kid, I encouraged my mother to follow her dreams and passions. And that as a parent, I encouraged my kids. So I had to talk to myself like I was somebody else to give myself. And I still struggle every day um, thinking, oh, gosh, this is so hard. And am I doing the right thing? So it's, it's an ongoing struggle. And then it's funny because that was so public. Now, the BDSM stuff is a more private journey. Mm-hmm. But. It happened because I started dating and several, several years after my marriage ended, I still didn't know anything about BDSM. I never asked anybody else. Actually, that's not true. One guy said, well, you know, you could, you could slap my ass or something if you want. And he didn't know what to do with it either. Um, so again, I'm, I'm still thinking, right, I'm, I'm just crazy. But then one, one person that I talked to actually was telling me, it was a man, but he was telling me how he was actually a sexual submissive in a relationship with somebody who was out of town. Um, I can't remember Austin someplace. And I was listening to all of the stories and I said, what? And I said, did you ever say no? And he's like, Oh, well, he said, I said, no, because she wanted me to go to parties with her. And I wouldn't do that because I was afraid I'd be out. And I was like, Oh my God, parties, parties. Like who, Part, who else would do this in front of somebody else, right? Again, I don't get addressed in front of anybody. And, um, and so he, we, we ended up breaking up, but that resonated. Parties, who else would do this? So I am so, I'm really smart, but I was so stupid because I was so blocked to this that I thought, okay, I started Googling like Austin parties, like Austin sex parties, you know? And probably it took me two weeks before I realized it was like a light went off and my head hit the wall and I went, duh, if they have parties like this in Austin, they probably have parties like this in Houston, you idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Right. But that's how much resistance there was to this and how much fear. And, uh, and then I found out that there is this, this huge, you know, kinky community full of people that are interested in BDSM and that they, they have meetings and that they talk openly and, I started going and I learned so much. And I even said, if, if vanilla people, people who don't have any interest at all in BDSM, but just are interested in relationships, if they would talk like this, where the men mm-hmm. talk, the women talk, everybody shares so openly and honestly, every relationship would be better because of this level of outward expression and conversation. And, I have uh, to agree. That was it. But as soon as... As soon as I found it, I was like, oh, my God, this is me. I'm not the craziest person in the room. And it's amazing. <laughs> well, um, yeah. It's and so reassuring. <laughs> that enlightening moment for you, I mean, you said it, it took four years to make that leap to Darling Way. Uh, yeah. But so let's let's talk to our listeners directly for a second, because a lot of our listeners are mm-hmm. lifestyle people. Mm-hmm. But a lot yeah. of our people aren't. They want to be. A lot of people that listen to our show are, are asking themselves questions about their sexuality. They're asking questions and, and maybe they don't know how to talk to that person. Maybe they're afraid they'll get mad. Maybe they're afraid to walk into a store like Darling Way because they don't know. Yeah. Or they don't know. So how would you start if, if you were telling somebody how to just walk into uncharted territory, whether it's a store like Darling Way or whether it's making that leap and asking their partner to try something new? Um, as, as from your experience, cause you have literally done everything. I have yeah. a list here that I wrote down in front of me and you are everything. So <laughs> how would you start? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think people need a little bit of support. I think that's the first thing for any change that we want. Um, is to know that, that we're going to have like a sounding board and, and somebody, um, to kind of share a little bit with. So if they can find a friend, if there's somebody they already know in their world that they can start opening up to that is not necessarily their partner, but to help give them the courage 
and to make sure that they remember that they're lovable and they're not just completely crazy. Um, I think that can help because when somebody's got our back, we, we feel a little bit more comfortable taking any kind of leap. But if you don't have that in your life, then that's, that's why people end up coming to Darling Way too, is they don't know anybody else they can talk to and they hear me or they read about us, our reviews or something. And they realize that they can come to us and that they can, they can talk and they can be open. And, um, they're not quite sure until, until they actually come in and, and see and feel and, and, and leave with a smile on their face. But, um, but that's part of what we provide is just a little bit of a safe harbor where you can start your journey with us. And then I love that. Then, then when it comes to, well, and I tell people like, we will love you until you learn to love yourself. When you love yourself, we will help you learn to love other people if that's what you want. Right. And, and that's okay. Yeah. Cause some people want to be happily single. I'm totally okay. Just love yourself. Oh, absolutely. We have, we have to, we all absolutely. deserve that. So we, We've been dropping, you know, name dropping Darling Way a little bit. And I mean, obviously, people have probably deduced it's a it's a store. It's a boutique located in Houston, but it's a lot more than that. So can we like just tell our listeners exactly what Darling Way is and and who Darling Way is there for? Well, so like I said, Darling Way is the place I wanted to go when I was getting Mm -hmm. divorced and wanted to find joyful sex um, or uh, the hope of joyful sex and love and romance. Mm -hmm. But um, if I could run it like a community center. Well, really, it kind of is. It's it's actually a community center with the little gift shop. It's just the gift shop started <laughs> kind of first, and then because it's the it's the pedestal. My mission is to change the way that people think about love, sex, and romance. But then everything that we sell at Darling Way are the physical embodiments. They're the things that will actually help you. So if you want to learn to cook, then you need some pots and pans and whatever. And we have that sort of assortment. So if you want fun and interesting, sexy passion stuff, then we have all sorts of things to help you find that whatever your version no matter what you want to cook we've got something for you to play with and to enjoy and to create your own romantic show because i think everybody should have a great romantic show not see the same show every night in their bedroom and that they should have a prop closet and they should take care of those props and and use them well and be proud of them i have to so, say i absolutely love your analogies they paint <laughs> like wonderful <laughs> they do paint quite a picture they yeah. really do thank you it's the only way i can talk it's terrible but um but so, so that's what Darling Way is, and, and that's why I'm telling you, it, it's more about that people come in there and they connect. Everything to me is personal. And so um, if you just think of it as your, your community center, that that's what it is, and then everything else flows from that. So we do classes and workshops. I teach classes on, you know, on how to blow his mind while loving his body. I'm teaching one um, this weekend on um, oral, his and her oral pleasure. I teach stay it sexy, make it naughty. Um, I teach, um, are you the right one for people doing dating, right? Because we're so looking for the right one that we forget to look at who we are. Um, so own your sexy power, anything and everything. And we host bachelorette parties. We host birthday parties. The local chamber of commerce has been there a couple of different times. <laughs> anything and every reason to have people get together, be happy and smile and remember that love, sex, and romance, are, they're, they're just, they should be the best parts of life. Tell me that the Chamber of Commerce coming in there did not just was not sobering for some of those people, right? Oh, it was, but it's such it was such a good excuse. Some people need an excuse. They can't own it themselves yet. So they come <sighs> in with the excuse of something else. And that's just wonderful because then they know that we're there did and you- that they can talk to us. Yeah, awesome. did you kind of feel like a, a little uh, pride going, all right, we're breaking some of the taboo here? Yeah, you're, oh, you're a I wall kicker. I cried every day. <laughs> I can't tell you that. Um, and it's good because I get shut down in so many ways. I have my insurance canceled. I had my bank of 20 years not be willing to open a checking account for me. What? Um, what? Because, uh, because yeah. of the bi- type of business you were trying to yes, stand up? Exactly. What? Exactly. Because mm. when you talk about sex, even though I'm trying to do it in this in this way that's valuable, that, that's valuable, that's meaningful, that's important, that's respectful, that's open and honest. Um, it scares people. And in this culture, anything about sex gets shut down. I keep waiting for my social media to get shut down. Oh, they flag yeah. us on everything. We can't promote different things. 
we tried to promote sexy trivia. We, I host the sexy trivia that, every month because I think there's so much interesting. Yeah, we, we totally understand that. I've been shut down 15 different ways for this podcast when we tried to grow it, and yeah. we've been kicked. I mean, they won't take our advertising money. They won't let us promote it just because swingers in yeah. our title. Uh, right. They, I mean, nothing. We no nudity in the pictures. Nothing, and they will not let us promote our podcast. Um, they won't let right. us, uh, I had, I've had almost all those troubles that you talked about. I thought it was unique. I didn't know there was another person out there that, you know, said, fuck the man the way I feel like it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, so right. let, I, frankly, I think if we, if we were getting fucked more often, we'd be a lot happier and right? be, Amen, sister. there'd be less issue with it. That, I think this, it's like prohibition. How did we not figure out that prohibition doesn't work? <laughs> and, um, so it's, you know, that's yeah. what I always say about sex positivity is that when I'm getting sex, I'm pretty positive about life. So <laughs> I think yeah. that. Exactly. That. See, that sex positivity. Absolutely. I'm totally. I like that. Um, Did you know also, um, there's a book, Think and Grow Rich from um, Napoleon Hill wrote it in 1937. And he interviewed the billionaires of the time. And what he found was that the most successful, professionally, financially successful men at that time were all in happy, healthy sexual relationships. No kidding. So really? He talks to, yes. He found that a bricklayer who was having regular happy sex laid twice as many bricks as a bricklayer who wasn't having happy, healthy sex. And huh. his argument is brilliant, and this is what I talk about, so we have to own our sexy power, is that when you have that energy, and, and sexual energy is kind of this life force, and when we're using it in a way but when you're getting, you know, laid at night, you're getting that fulfillment and that joy and that connection at night, then during the day, you are more made it motivated. You take that energy and you use it also in a positive way, which takes your talents and raises them to a level of genius. And then at night, you go home and you take that and then you enjoy sex again, right? So you're using it in a very controlled way. Bill Clinton took that sexual energy, right? And and it, it controlled him, and so he misused it. During the daytime, he was busy getting laid instead of creating, you know, <laughs> what a presidency. That's the example. When it's controlling you versus you're controlling it and directing it in positive forces. And well, so, yes, it's, you are. When, it's, when you're, yeah, it's like what Spider-Man said. Like, with great power comes great responsibility, and sex is power. That's how I've always felt about my penis. Yeah. Oh, Mickey. <laughs> What am I going to do with you? It's so good of you to share it with all the others. I love that. We're into sharing. Share the power. Let me bless you, my child. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, oh, there, there were so many ways we're going to hell right now. So let's talk. So to me, what I've really grasped about Darling Way and what I've grasped about you uh, and by the way, we're going to put so many links in the show notes um, for this because you do so much shit that there's just going to be a ton of things in here linking to your different projects, your ESPN show, yeah. your podcast, your YouTube, Darling Way Boutique. But so with all of that, I mean, we live in a world where the number of mediums for communication are fucking absurd, right? Television and radio yeah. are not it anymore. You're on a podcast right now. Um, and we represent an alternative lifestyle. So your experience runs mm -hmm. the gamut of communication mechanisms. And I think Darling Way is a hub for communication. When people don't know how to communicate, they can come in and learn another way or talk about something or feel comfortable talking about it. Do you think that there is a communication medium that's more effective than others? And which one's your favorite? Oh, no, I don't choose favorites. I really don't. <laughs> I, I, it's like chocolate because, over vanilla. Like, I, I like them both. Exactly. All right. I want swirls. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Cookies, candy. No. So I, I really don't. I just think that each, for me personally, I, I enjoy Facebook because I like words. So Instagram, where it's just pictures, doesn't really float my boat. But there are other people who love Instagram. So I think we just, and the same thing with sexy fun. You like to swing. I like BDSM. Some people like, you know, Tantra, whatever it is. It's not that one's better. It's just so important that we each get in tune with what it is that works for us, what fuels us, what feels the best, and that we not buy into something just because somebody else is doing it. You know, I might be intrigued, and frankly, I am. I, I love to talk to swingers. There's so much about this lifestyle that I love and appreciate and adore. Um, and I want to be able to do that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the way that I live my sexy life. And that should be totally okay. So, no, I really don't have a favorite medium. I, I just, whatever it is, then we try and do. And we can't do it all. I do. I hate FOMO, fear of missing out. But, um, 
but we just, we do what we can do. So I appreciate that. But Got otherwise, it. Well, no. so you have a book yeah. called Love and Laughter, right? I mean, you, you Love wrote Love and it. Laughter, Sexy, Meaningful, Fun for Everyone. Yeah. Mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your book. Why well, did you because, write it? Because when I was 40-something years old, people think that great sex is only about being in your 20s. They're thinking it's about having a young, skinny body and having lots of wild, crazy sex. And I think there's so much more to it. Um, and I was never encouraged, and I don't think most women are, to really appreciate sexy for what it can do for us. Most girls are raised to, we think about sex, and basically we're giving sex for love, and we're much more concerned about a man's pleasure than our own. And we're not encouraged to have our own fantasies, because like me, oh my God, that would make you crazy. And that could make you like a slut, <laughs> a like sex. I like right? sluts. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, slut should be a, a wow. really a, a positive term, in my opinion. But I have to agree with you. There's always been this yeah. kind of double standard. At least, you know, that's how I was raised. That's what I observed. So my sexual journey, I, I look back and it's actually kind of shocking because I don't think, given where I was 15, 20, 25 years ago, that I, I would have ever, ever guessed I would have gotten to this point because <laughs> sex wasn't talked about. Sex was shameful. Sex is something men thought about, not women. Right. Right. No, I, I totally agree. And so, and, but I wanted to open the door for women to actually to appreciate the pleasures that they can find in their own body. And to, again, because what I see um, were marriages where people would actually love each other and mm -hmm. yet not have great sex. And I'm, I'm convinced so much of that is because women were just, were, were held back. And one of my clients, actually, she was just lovely, 25 years of marriage. And what she told me was that she always loved her husband, but until she read my book and until she found Darling Way, she didn't love loving him. And now that's what I realized. So I want people to love. I want you to love with your heart and your body. Everything around us tells love with your heart. We don't give any suggestions how to love with our bodies. So I want to help people love with their bodies and their hearts. So that's what my book is for. And Men have told me that it's like a sex language translator. So, in fact, the woman of 25 <laughs> years, her husband read my book first. It gave it to her and said, "You need to read this." And Aww. that's what that's what changed things. And now, oh my God, they have so much sexy fun, and they're adorable. And and she was raised in a very religious background. And God, if their marriage would have ended, that would have been the biggest waste. All right, that's well, a freaking waste. So oh. you you heard it here, folks. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus is for pussies. If you want to know how to speak your woman's language, love and laughter, that's what you need. <laughs> well, yeah, and see, I think pussies, right? Pussies are really, really incredibly strong. Yeah. Freud, Freud was actually projecting when he talked about penis envy. It's womb envy. We create life. Our pussies literally burst life. Yeah. yeah your penis and your balls, those are the weakest part of a man. Yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah. Pussy can take a beating. Oh, yeah. Balls can't. There's a, I, yeah. I, can't, I will not do it justice, so I will not try it, but there is a great Betty White quote about why do they always refer yeah. to pussies as being sensitive? Like, have, have you not mm -hmm. heard of balls? Like, pussies take a beating, they give life. You guys are sensitive. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, you flick to... me in the nuts, I'm on the ground. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good thing. I, I, I yeah. encourage you not to flick me in the nuts, by the way. Just don't do that. That's not cool. It's never okay. No, but if you have a desire to do that, there are people that enjoy cock and ball torture. So, hey, she's she's got yeah. a point there. Uh, yeah, I don't know what. Yeah. His I, eyes are watering a little bit. He's one of those like if he thinks about somebody like puking or like somebody getting hurt uh, or somebody kicked in the groin, like all of a sudden he succumbs to his own psychosomatic pain. <laughs> so he's, his yeah. eyes are watering right now. It's pretty uh, hilarious. No, no, it's no. Also, it's no. called it's... empathy. I mm. think that's a good thing. Yeah, that's I a positive trait. Smacking wee wee's yeah. is not cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not no, okay. No, not for you. <laughs> just not for you, exactly. Where we have to laugh about what makes us, what turns us on. It's crazy if it doesn't turn you on. But it's just, that's the way it is. Well, in, in cra you know, the difference um, between genius and crazy is it's genius after it works, right? So, <laughs> touche. <laughs> but you know, so and, let's and go ahead. Yeah, if I could, if I just want to go back because I, I feel like I shifted over. I 
you talked about like if there are people, whether they're in the lifestyle or otherwise, that are still nervous about talking to their partner then about things. Mm -hmm. And for example, I think that maybe there are people um, within the, the swinging lifestyle that perhaps want either they want BDSM suddenly or, or they actually have wanted it, but they've been afraid to say it because they know their mm -hmm. partner's into swinging, but not the others. Um, maybe because their partner has laughed, like you laughed at the idea of this and said, Oh, not, you know, I don't want that. And, but sometimes we then have to follow up with the, the question to the partner, wait, I might not want that, but does that idea turn you on and not be afraid, not just assume because we don't want it that our partner doesn't want it. Right. And not be afraid that if we want something slightly different, then somebody's going to be unhappy or somebody has to give that up. And so, for example, I see a lot of people who are interested in the idea of swinging because, and threesomes are certainly, that's one of the most popular fantasies for people everywhere, men and women. But I will tell people, look, the fact is, is that if you can just own your fantasy, if you can accept it yourself, if you can then share it with your partner, give them time to think about it. Whether or not you actually want that fantasy to, to come true li literally and figuratively, like we don't necessarily have to bring a third person into your bedroom for you to use that, that threesome fantasy to bring you closer to your partner, not, not mm -hmm. further. And so, for example, I tell them, you can always be talking about, oh, so while I'm doing this, this person is going to come in the room and they're going to be doing this to you. And you might just have to say those words to somebody to get that fantasy suddenly it's real and they're off and they're having a climax like just at the thought of something else happening right there are all sorts of different ways once we know what turns us on once we're willing to accept it that we can try it out that we can incorporate it with your partner so it brings you together and then you can decide maybe you need more maybe you want to go further maybe with time one of you gets more comfortable with the idea right you know, Mallory right. really would get turned on by CBT. Maybe there's a way that it could look like that, but without that intense sensation to you that mm -hmm. that doesn't feel good. CBT is cock and place. ball torture for those of you who yeah. aren't crying <laughs> silently like well, and Mickey I, over here. Yeah, and I see what you're saying, Beth, because you know, Mickey and I actually experience this personally. There, there are things that we're, as individuals, into and that turn us on very much so, but it doesn't, there's not exact reciprocity there. Like, let's take, for instance, spanking. Yeah. Yeah. I discovered that that's something I enjoy very much so. And Mickey's a little hesitant. Aww. And it's not something when he performs on me, per se, that he gets, like, a, a physical stimulation out of it. He likes seeing my pleasure, but it's not, mm -hmm. you know, he wouldn't say that. Am, am I wrong here? No, am you're I not wrong at all. I, 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 I would go so far as to say I don't get off on it yeah. uh, because I, I personally have uh, issues, and, and we're getting really personal here, guys. This is Mickey yeah. and Mallory getting personal for you, but I have issues with hitting women. I, I feel uncomfortable doing it. Um, and I, I'd say almost every man does. Yeah, and so Let's and throw I, that out there for you. Yeah, and I and I'm I don't feel like I'm good at it, and you know, like doing it not with your fingertips, and make sure you pull your hand back, and don't follow through, and there's all these things that I'm trying to tell myself, and I'm so busy telling myself yeah. do it this way, not that way, yeah. that I forget to enjoy it, and so I struggle with yeah. it, and that's where a place like Darling Way would come in so Absolutely. handy to be able to go maybe together to a seminar and and really understand yeah. better for me because she does love it, she gets I mean gush boom, wet. Yeah. It's like, wow, this is awesome, but I don't know if I'm doing it right. And then if I do it wrong and I hit it too hard and it's, it's, it's a lot of stress. It is a lot of stress. And I appreciate the yeah. support you do, you do give. And, um, when somebody else does it right though, bam, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's a happy girl. Well, it's just one of those things I and, never would have thought. Hey, and isn't that beautiful? I tell people now that no matter how old we are, there's always something new and different. No matter how long you've been with somebody, we can come up with new and different oh, yeah. and exciting ways for you to connect. And you can be virgins together for the rest oh, yeah. of your life at different things. I am perfectly comfortable dying a CBT virgin, just so you know. <laughs> well, after, I remember the first time I got spanked and I like ran in the room, jumped on the bed, put the pillow over my face and I was like, oh my God, I liked it. Oh like, yeah, I remember. You, you, you had a fit. You were like. I was like yeah. a little girl that the boy said, hey, I think you're cute. Yeah, you had drooly pussy for two days. Yeah. <laughs> drooly pussy. That's not. Isn't it funny? <laughs> But somehow there is this idea, like I still, I get in there, but you said at the beginning that you saw me naked. I lit, my face is bright red. I don't blush very often, right? <laughs> but it's, just, it's crazy that there are still these, these, these 
stories, these hangups, these things that we don't know about ourselves that still feel silly and that feel crazy or something. Yeah. And so like, oh, how could yeah. I, how could my body enjoy this when it's such a, what, what should I get out of spanking? Why would a strong yeah. woman want to be spanked, right? All these different, our head games and stuff. Oh, yeah. Because you're a oh, bad, yeah. strong nice woman. Man. Right. Yeah, and what my you know, man you, would want to actually smack a woman's ass, right? Well, and you, we don't always know why. You know, figuring it out is half the battle. Yeah. But speaking of spanking, let's talk about that spank fest in May. <laughs> oh yes, I'm very Houston, excited about it. I know. I'm so glad that I told you too. So it's um, people because it's nice when you get together with people who share your your crazy and um and that's what this is so there's the lone star spanking um conference for a whole weekend in may in houston and it is just a group of people that will come together and they'll talk all about the 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 whys and wherefores and the hows Mm -hmm. and and the different um props you can use for spanking and and give demos and just indulge and enjoy so sounds riveting and, and there's so yeah, and there's so much to thinking. It's also one of the more prevalent fantasies for men and yes. women because there's yes. something so primitive, something about it. The power, power play mm-hmm. is such an important part of it, and especially with thinking. But just from a, a an, an anatomical um, perspective, when you hit the buttocks, there's all the, the genital region is in there. So as soon as we start blood flow there, as soon as we start sensation there, then everything sort of lights up and gets excited and starts getting more stimulated. So from a very yeah. physical standpoint, that hitting the butt is a great way to start turning the body on. Well, and so, I, I think we have yeah. to, you know, bring you back and do a whole show on BDSM. Oh, I think, absolutely. Uh, we, we need to come back and just kind of get deep on BDSM. You see what I did yeah. there? Uh, but yes. <laughs> we, we got to get deep on, uh, you know, what it means to tie somebody up and, uh, beat that ass and, and whatever it is being the top, the bottom, the dom, the sub, uh, and, yeah. and get into that a little bit, because there's a lot that I personally don't know. And it sounds like you may have some things to teach. Yeah. And I think there's just a different perspective. A lot of people think BDSM, it scares them because it, it they just think pain and they think basically violence. Yeah, stereotype, and maybe those, a fear of the stereotype. Stereotype. Yeah, and and so we want to take that out. And I want uh, Fifty Shades turns so many people on. That should give us an indication that we need more conversation about it. But then it did a disservice by ignoring things like consent and, and rationality and and stuff. So, and the idea that we should be cured of wanting kinky sex, I also thought was not good. So, um, but that's why the more open we can be about these things and start talking and be responsible and this you know, the Lone Star Spanking Party in Houston and stuff. It's just a great way to start getting more conversations and getting it out there um, and ways for people to learn, to figure out whether or not they want it to be part of their sexy, fun repertoire or not, right? It doesn't have to be. I said the Rockettes are great. I want to see them once a year. I don't want them as a regular routine in my romantic shows. So we all get to decide what, what kind of shows we want on a regular basis, what kind we want more frequently and don't feel any shame and I didn't like that. I don't like Phantom of the Opera, but no shame. Just that's not my thing. So um, I think giving people permission and that's where, um, and then realizing once we start talking, if you and I hadn't been talking, Mallory, about this banking stuff, we wouldn't mm-hmm. have known about this conference. Yeah. And what a fun, exciting getaway. You can like it or love it or hate it. It doesn't matter, but one, it'll be interesting. So I encourage everybody just to take a chance and then to share their perspectives without feeling judged or afraid. So. I absolutely love that. So with with everything you have going on, everything you've done, you have Darling Way Boutique. Um, it, it's a it's a storefront. It's a, a pseudo community center. I love that description of it. What's what's next for you? What's what's in the cards or where do you see yourself uh, in, you know, two, five, ten years with with the path you're on? Uh, well, I don't um you know, uh, I don't think small, I, I tend to dream big. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, I just like, I'll share myself, right? This is my heart. And it, it only, there's this part of me that's afraid, oh, if I say this and then I don't make it, people are going to think I'm a failure, right? There's that, there is still that fear of being judged, whatever it is. Um, but now I'm doing it anyway. So I'll tell you quite honestly, I want, um, I paused the radio show. I want a TV show. That's really, and that's why I switched over to YouTube, but I want, I want a TV show. I want a bigger 
national, if not international platform, because Mm -hmm. I really do want people to, to have a better option. And I don't want good relationships getting wasted because they can't figure out how to support it with passion. And, um, and I think that I am, I have a unique perspective and a unique voice and it. It doesn't have to be right or wrong. Um, it doesn't have to be the best. It's just that it is what it is. And I, I'd like to be able to put myself out there and, and help do that. So, and then yeah. I want Darling Way to be, basically, I want it to be like, um, like a Home Depot. I want it to be national. I want it to be in every city. I want it to be a place where people think anything about love, sex, and romance. And they're like, hey, let's just go to Darling Way. We can ask them questions. They'll tell us how to DIY. They'll give us classes. There's, it's fun. There's always something, and and there's no shame. It's just, in fact, frankly, I think people should be proud when they're embracing oh, their sexy side, and they're, I would, you know, I they walk around. Absolutely love to see you along like HGTV one taking the taboo away. Like you're watching the new episode of Fixer Upper, and we're talking about you know different you know spanking mechanisms. Horny or, girl TV. Yeah, like that would be fantastic. And Beth is so charismatic, and you know. Yeah easy on the eyes yeah thank you well oh god so beth we're 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 coming up on the end of our time here but you know we met you uh at hito uh when we do we go to hito a few times a year and everybody knows it uh and we've got a hito trip right around the corner we're leaving here in a couple weeks and we're going on the first february trip for rachel's rascal so i want to ask you about hito before we close this thing up which is a little different but was so was was that your first time at hito What's the wildest it thing? You, what's the what's the wildest thing you did? What's the wildest thing you saw? And who would you recommend Hito to based on your experience? Um, so for me, the wildest, well, the, the the thing that pushed my comfort was really walking around stark naked, like just walking around in daylight. That was so uncomfortable, still to me. I did the body paint because somehow I felt like a three year old, but I was hiding behind some body paint. Frankly, and, and he is just the most talented guy. I want to bring him to Houston and have him paint my body every day or get it permanently tattooed. But anyway, um, so I literally hid behind body paint because that's how uncomfortable it was. Um, and that, it just, it pushed. So for four days or something, that was hard. And I was hoping to come home with a lot more physical confidence. I'm not sure I got it, but I do. I appreciate it in so many other people. It's just beautiful to see. That was awesome. Um, and uh the wildest, because I've seen a lot of sexy wildness, so that doesn't really do it. So maybe um, maybe the wildest actually for me was watching people who were so comfortable going around and doing um, just being with their totally imperfect bodies, because nobody's got a perfect body, and, and just being and doing and sharing it with each other and loving on each other and talking to each other about not just sexy stuff, but normal stuff with all of this going around and, um, and the welcoming. That was actually what I appreciated most was how welcoming people were, how, um, how comfortable they were talking about their own love story, which I think is huge and their own journeys. Um, and I always ask about jealousy because to me, that's what I grew up with my insecurities. And I know jealousy comes from insecurity, um, how they've dealt with it. And so it was, um, it was, it was awesome. And would I recommend it? Um, who would I recommend it to? To people who want a little bit of an adventure, whether or not they actually want to swing. Cause I, I did not participate with anybody else except my partner. Um, and so, and yet I didn't get any flack for that, which I appreciated very much. I didn't feel any pressure to do anything. I didn't, you know, I went to the nude part because I I wanted to not because anybody else was pressuring me to do that. If I wanted to stay on the prude side, which I laughed, like the idea of me being a prude just cracked me up. But, um, <laughs> but I could have, you know, <laughs> um, but I could have stayed over there, but I pushed myself. So I don't want people ever to think that they have to go there and do anything about anybody else. It's just what you're comfortable with. And, um, and it certainly was eye opening and it made me smile. It made me giggle. It made me feel like I was a virgin again, all of those things. So, um, but you, I would never want somebody to go there with other, anything other than an open heart and kindness towards people who are doing things that you may or whether you choose to do them or not, don't ever judge somebody else who's doing something consensually because that wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that for Hito. And so that's, that's what I tell people. If, they're in, if they want to go just get their eyes open and see something new and different and push themselves a little bit, it's exciting and 
it's awesome. And the staff is lovely too. It's a, it's a fantastic place. Wow. That is probably the best review those guys could ever hope for. So uh, they better give me my 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, the folks at Hito do a, a pretty good job, but I think the people at Hito make it, and I think you just summed that up pretty well. Well, Miss Liebling, this has yeah. been well, enlightening. Rachel, oh, go ahead. Rachel's, Rachel's Rascals, they welcomed us, and they helped us book our reservation and stuff. So, Jim, I cannot say enough nice things about them. And if anybody, I absolutely, I would send people there. I'd love to partner with them also because um, they were extraordinary. Ah, well, let's talk about that. We host for the Rascals, so that's uh, that's a lot of fun, and we would love to do yeah. more work with you. So, um, but we are about out of time. So, thank you, obviously, from the bottom of our heart. You know, thank you from her red bottom. Uh, you've been amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you. I am so honored that you um, invited me on the show. I love. I just adore you too. And I love what you're doing. I love your podcast and I'm thrilled to be part of it. So, well, we think it's awesome and we love what you're doing. And, you know, we do, we do this for our listeners because we want them to know people like you to know people like you are out there. Um, this is a, we live in Orlando, so this is a community that's nowhere near our community, but we have a lot of listeners in Houston. Yes, we do. So we want them to know that Darling Way is out there, that there's resources there. If you have questions, concerns, right? We're going to put these in the show notes. We're going to put these links here. We'll also put a link on our friends page to Darling Way. So you can always go there and get right where you want to go. Uh, if you're in the Texas area, you're visiting Houston. Look up Miss Liebling. She does have a radio show on ESPN. She's got a YouTube channel. She's a former podcaster. She's an author. She's got a book called Love and Laughter. You want to tell them what the rest of that title is? It's pretty long. <laughs> Love and Laughter, Sexy, Meaningful, Fun for Everyone. There you yeah. go. And, uh, and if they're not in Houston, they can go to darlingway.com because we'll help anybody anywhere. And we just, it's wonderful to connect with people. That's, that's that what we do. Is so outstanding. Beth Liebling, thank you for spending time with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after this with Swinging in the News. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. Welcome back to Casual Swinger. I'm Mallory. <laughs> it's good to know because I'm Mickey, not you. We're oh, not Mickey. I'm not going to let him um, publish this, but I just introed him and, and deemed myself Mickey. And I've been over here crying from laughter and trying to compose my shit. That's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I'm like, well, I guess I'm Mallory. I'm going to play with myself because I've always wanted to know what that feels like. I guess in the cadence because you've brought us in twice today. It just it was stuck in my head. That's good. Oh, well, welcome back, everybody. Go. We're going to talk swinging in the news. Swinging in the news. We talked about it earlier today. We're going to let you guys know about a house in Maple Glen, Pennsylvania. Yeah, this I mean, this is literally viral. Oh, I, I, so... I, I don't know, for our listeners out there that have ever sold a house, we mm -hmm. have sold houses before, mm -hmm. and I've sold two of them, and to get this kind of exposure that these guys got it's this priceless. weekend- It's priceless. It's absolutely priceless. Uh, I think everybody is going to go out and do this. They're going to build this shit, even if they don't use it. I love that they market, market it to the, the sexiness of this house. All right. So here's what's up. There's a house on Redfin, and this house on Redfin is in Maple Gun, Pennsylvania. I'm going to read you the basis- of, of what this says, because I think it's, it's kind of neat, right? Uh, the basis of it is it said it's a one-of-a-kind suburban home. Private quiet lane of three homes leads you to a secluded four-bedroom upstairs and one bedroom in the basement, right? It's like, it, it's very simple. It's very yeah. kind. Yeah, but like most houses you would find in yeah, it, it, more affluent parts of Pennsylvania. But when you dig in, right, they talk about the school district. They talk about all this stuff. Right. But in, in the process of talking about this, they get to and a private sex oasis in the basement. Uh, hello. Say what? Yeah. A uh, private sex oasis. I know and, I'm over here going, how much value does that add? Right. Well, uh, quite, quite a lot because the listing price was $750,000 for a 5,000 square foot house. It's been on Redfin for two days. Yeah. Right. At that point. So it hadn't been up there long. We're talking about a great house in a great neighborhood. But when you dug into the pictures a little bit, this basement was a bondage fiesta. It was. 
Yeah. And it was artfully done. I have to give it to them. They really used the space to, to their advantage. They had some really neat pieces in there. I'm sure they're not cheap, not by any stretch of the imagination. And Beth made a good point. We discussed this lately um, in our interview with her, that it's probably a little colder than I would like, but I do find it very interesting. And I would totally airbnb that well they were airbnb it and they're getting big money for it they should they absolutely should that's a unique experience now, i right believe there. airbnb still has the pictures of some of this stuff up there but we're talking about a a custom built sex swing yeah with, built out of four by four stained really beautiful pretty. and if you look in the background two things that really stand out to me about this picture number one there's a bed but that bed has got a cage around it. But more importantly, yeah. it's got a cage underneath it. Yeah. And Beth noticed that. She's yeah. like, there's a cage underneath that motherfucker. Yeah. So let's think about that for a second. What are you going to do? You're going to put your significant under in the cage while you get your groove on on top? Knows. I'd love to watch, though. All right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I want to be in the cage, but, you know. Just yeah, I'll try anything once. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, we're talking. I mean, now, of course, you can see the gym in the other direction. So yeah. you can either work out or work out. But here's the thing. What made this thing go viral? When I looked at this thing on Friday, it had half a million views. Half a million views on a fucking real estate listing. Yeah. That is unheard of. It is. It is. And again, it's maybe that the, it was feeding some sort of taboo that people were like, oh, my God, they're actually admitting that they have a sex dungeon in here. Holy shit. You got to look at this. Well, that brings me to what happened. I love happened. that they so highlighted it. This thing got picked up by a lot of news outlets. Oh, yeah, All BuzzFeed. Right? BuzzFeed picked it up. Vice picked it up. And that doesn't surprise me that much, right? Because viral shit gets picked up by BuzzFeed and Vice yeah. all the time. But Fox Missionary Sex Only News picked it up. <laughs> all right? <laughs> CNN picked it up. Right, sorry. I, sorry, anybody who loves Fox News. I'm just saying. Those guys are yeah. you know, Puritans over there. They picked it up. Everybody picks this thing up. And, of course, when they picked it up, they talked about, you know, swinging and sex and, and you know, all the debaucherous shit you're going to do in your basement. And here's what happened. So people at BuzzFeed got a hold of, and we reached out to but didn't hear back from, the real estate agent, a lady named Melissa Leonard. Um, they have pissed off neighbors. The neighbors are actually angry. Why? Exactly. Whoa, 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 Back whoa. to what we were talking about Back in the intro. To track up. So they're upset because of what furniture, uh -huh. essentially furniture, is available inside this home for purchase. So I'm going to quote from the BuzzFeed article. So they caught up with the angry neighbor and Slate's Dan Coy overheard this talking to Melissa Leonard. Melissa Leonard, again, is the real estate agent. This is uh -huh. directly from the BuzzFeed article. We'll put this in the show notes. Male voice. We're very upset about this whole thing. We do not want someone like this in our neighborhood. Take that off the internet. That's disgusting. We don't want that. Hey, male voice, fuck you. Yeah. My house. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What the fuck? I want to drive to Maple Glen and fuck in their front yard. <laughs> okay, so that he can actually get upset about. That's I different. I just want to have sex. But <laughs> God bless the person who buys that home. Right? Now, here's the best part. Melissa Leonard... I, I love this real estate agent. Okay, I love this real estate agent for a lot of reasons. You're yeah. selling a house in PA, Maple Glen. Melissa Le Melissa Lunder deserves your business. Yes. Because this girl has balls. Mm -hmm. She put these pictures on mm -hmm. the Redfin. So she put this on the MLS. Yeah. That's how it made it to Redfin. Yes. She called it a sex oasis. She put the pictures up there because you know what? It's their house and it's a selling point. They put something in there that was recreational and exciting and fun and brought them closer together in their marriage. And yeah, there's a whole rack of shit yeah, that he beats her ass with. Regardless of how the real estate agent feels about that house, what her personal beliefs are or whatever, she's doing her job. She did. And you know what? How well did she do her job? 499,000 views, folks. And let me tell you something else about this house. I'm going to get a freaking the... mic drop for her. Right, big mic drop. But let me tell you something else about this house. They actually took, you can't make an offer on it anymore. You have to submit it. They have so many offers that they're, they put a, what's called an offer timer yeah. on it. And at uh, Saturday, it was 72 hours. It's down to like 21 hours right now. Mm -hmm. They're not going to review offers for 21 more hours. That's how many offers they have. They're like, yeah. you're going to have to. I bet this house goes for over a million dollars, and we're going to watch it. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it on Zillow. I'm going to see what this fucker sells for because you can't buy this kind of exposure. There's no way you can say, I want a million people to see my house. Yeah. And these people did it, and they did it by being sex positive. Right on. And I dig the Knuckles, shit out of that. whoever you so guys are. Here's what Melissa Leonard said to the guy. 
She said, sir, if the owner wants those photos in the listing, that's their choice. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have to take them down. We live next door and we don't want this. Once more, male voice, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Right? And Miss, Miss Leonard says, you're angry at me, but you're really angry at the owner. I'm just trying to sell their house as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And he says, people are all over the neighborhood and they're all saying they're here to see the sex house. Let me tell you something, folks. Every house is a sex house if you're doing it right. Yeah. Right? My house is a sex house. We've had sex in every room of this house and discussed the shit out of our children. <laughs> Matter of fact, we have pillows in our theater room that say we had sex here and, and here, here and, and here. here. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, it's if you're doing it right, you live in a sex house. If you are living in a sex house, do. It'll be better for you. How, what's your mood like today, Mallory? Oh, it's so much better. Right? My anxiety for... For the work week has is gone down drastically. So, so thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. So ladies and gentlemen, check out our show notes. There's a Redfin link in there. The Redfin link is boring as shit now. I'm going to go check that Airbnb link and see if I can find that house and see if they left them because yeah. the, the pictures. Did you screenshot the original picture? I did. I have on? the original. Okay, we need to post that I will. in our feed. It's on Twitter. I already posted it on Twitter. Perfect. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put that in the feed too to make sure you guys have it. But I do have the original Redfin posting where she talks about the uh, sex house. Apparently, I'm one of few people that have that. I yeah, they took it down pretty quickly. Yeah, they got it, but I caught it pretty quickly. Um, but look at the Vice article in the show notes. Look at the mm -hmm. BuzzFeed article, the pictures, the video. I mean, these guys didn't just do like a St. Andrew's cross. They have a fucking pentagram. I mean, well, it's, it's not a pentagram. It's, it's a star. It's a star. But it could be a pentagram. We could just flip it. I think I looked it up and it has a specific name and I can't remember what it is. Okay, now. it's so badass. It's it is got very chains cool, on though. it. I mean, these photos on the BuzzFeed and on the Vice article, just, I mean, they've got a... a uh, I don't know. Well, what is this? A hobby horse for freaks? I mean, I you've been on one of these though. I have. I, I remember that. That was fun. Uh, but I mean, just looking through some of this stuff, you look at it and you go, "Wow!" I mean, we got riding crops and we've got these like ass whipping tassels. I don't know what that thing is. Yeah, they left all the accessories, which I thought was kind of genius. The only one that concerns me is the fist. Do you see the disembodied fist sitting there? Stop looking at it, Mickey. <laughs> Just We're a no judgment zone, sir. It's not a matter of judgment. I'm just like, what is it? It, it scares me. Guys, it's like your doink cup. I do have a doink fist. The doink yeah. fist is pretty cool. But guys, this has been Swinging in the News. This has been Casual Swinger. This is a show we called All in the Name of Love. We hope you enjoyed your interview with Beth Liebling. We hope you learned something. Check out Darling Way Boutique. Yes, yes. <laughs> Darlingway.com. Yes. Um, don't forget use casual swinger as a promo code if you decide to shop online um and get your free thong yeah and by and the way that's free shit for you guys just you know yeah. i don't know if, if you've never listened to our show before we that's not an affiliate code right you just go in there and it's no we're not getting no, no, paid. no we don't get anything yeah, from it she not, just yeah. yeah out of the kindness of her heart because she's such a an amazing person she just said hey let me give something to your listeners so 50 dollars purchase free thong casual swinger is the promo code and i suggested a discount code and she said no she yeah. said, I don't do discount codes. I give shit away. Yep. And that's yeah. when I'm like, God, I love this woman. Yeah. So, guys. She's awesome. This oh, has and been definitely check out, check out um, her bed talks. Oh, They're yeah. They're available on the website, too. They're really cool. They're video uh, casts. Yeah, that's super yeah. cool. So, lots of things to check out. Lots of stuff to chew on from this episode. And if you want to buy a badass sex house in Maple Glen, now you know where to do it. Mal, you want to tell everybody where to find us? You can find us as Casual Swinger everywhere. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, SLS, SDC, and Cassidy. Please visit us on our website at CasualSwinger.com. Don't forget to look up those sectionary or swingtionary words, I should say. Yeah. We're going to be including those in an episode here shortly, and there'll be something in it for you guys. Um, you can also email us at podcast at CasualSwinger.com. Send us your feedback, your likes, your dislikes, your questions. Um, we love you guys. Thank you for all your support. What she said, guys, don't forget to leave us a review, and we will be back to you from Hedonism 2 in just a couple weeks. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. 